Hello fellow coffee botherers, I'm Kev from coffeeblog.co.uk and in this video I'm going to be talking about buying a coffee machine or more specifically about how to make sure you're buying the right coffee machine for you. Buying a coffee machine might appear to be a really straightforward task, but it's actually more complex than it may appear. And that's because there are various different kinds of coffee machine. So the first question to ask is what kind of coffee do you want to drink via the coffee machine you're going to buy? So for example, if you want to drink filter coffee, then obviously you need a filter coffee machine. And for my blog post, run through of various different filter coffee machines, go to coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash filter coffee machines. Or maybe you're thinking of buying a pod or disc or capsule coffee machine such as Lavazza or Nespresso or Nespresso, sorry, Nestle, Dolce Gusto or Tassimo. And these kind of machines might be for you if you're looking for ultra convenience. If convenience is more important to you than taste, if you really value convenience highly, then a pod or disc machine might be a good choice for you if you're buying a coffee machine. What kind of pod machine you go for or capsule machine would depend on the kind of coffee you want to drink via that machine. So if you're wanting to make milkies purely via the pod, meaning you'd want to put a coffee pod in and then a milk pod rather than using a milk frother, then you'd want the Tassimo or the Nestle Dolce Gusto because they have the milk pods. Personally, I can't stand the milkies, the cappuccino, latte, etc., that come from milk pods because it, it just isn't right. It's not fresh milk. It's milk that's been sitting in a pod. And anyway, I'm not into that. Each to their own. But if, like me, you really want decent fresh milk in your milkies, whether it's milk or milk alternatives, then I'd recommend if you go in the pod or capsule route to go for the Lavazza machine or an espresso machine, Nespresso machine, and use a milk frother. And for a review of various different milk frothers, frothers go to coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash milk frothers. A quick comment on the differences between the different types of pod machines. So the main pod machines in the UK are the Lavazza, Nespresso, Dolce Gusto, and Tassimo. So Dolce Gusto and Tassimo are similar. They're similar in terms of the range of pods, the similar in that you have coffee pods and milk pods and so on. And Lavazza and Nespresso are similar as well. They're similar in that you only get coffee pods for them and you sort your milk out separately. And they're also very similar in the fact that they were invented by the same person. So they're actually very similar machines. They're made to work differently, but they're very similar and the resulting coffee is very similar. I find Lavazza coffee to be slightly hotter usually than original Nespresso and to be slightly stronger than original Nespresso machines as well because the pods have the espresso pods or the Nespresso espresso pods have less coffee than, than the Lavazza pods. So Lavazza is slightly stronger. So that's the difference between these machines. If you're wanting milkies via the pod, then you'd go for Tassimo or Dolce Gusto. If you're wanting to do the milk separately, then you'd go for Nespresso or Lavazza. Now to talk about espresso machines, because a lot of people looking for coffee machines are actually looking for espresso machines. There are two main types of espresso machine, and that is bean to cup coffee machine and traditional espresso machine. Bean to cup coffee machines are espresso machines, or most of them are. There are some bean to cup filter coffee machines, but not many. The majority of bean to cup machines are espresso machines. So most people, when they're talking about bean to cup, are talking about bean to cup espresso machines. So bean to cup espresso machines have a grinder at the top and they do everything for you, basically. So you press a button, you put the coffee beans in the top, obviously, you press a button, coffee comes out of the bottom and depending on what kind of bean to cup coffee machine you go for, you'll either press a button for the milk as well. And these are what you call one touch machines or fully automatic machines or the standard bean to cup machines have a milk frother, a steam wand, as do standard traditional espresso machines. So with them kind of espresso machines, you would handle the milk yourself and the bean to cup coffee machine would handle the coffee side of things. Traditional espresso machines are what most people are thinking of when they say espresso machine. 
And so this is what you'd see if you go into a coffee shop, into a cafe, and you see a barista using an espresso machine. Usually these are traditional espresso machines, not bean to cup machines, although that's not always the case. There are some cafes that use bean to cup, but the majority use traditional espresso machines. So we usually have a separate grinder and espresso machine. And traditional espresso machines comprise of two types of espresso machine, which is the fully manual piston machines, which are the original machines. That's how the pressure was originally generated through a piston. So you actually operate it via a lever and the piston creates a pressure. And pump machines, also known as semi-auto espresso machines. Although there are some fully manual espresso machines. Some people still use them and they're a really cool machine to use. The majority of people tend to go for pump or semi-automatic espresso machines and the bulk of espresso machines on the market, domestic espresso machines are pump or semi-automatic espresso machines and not fully manual. So talking in more depth now about the semi-automatic espresso machines, these are separated into two types as well. So you've got the domestic consumer espresso machines, and then you've got what are known as prosumer, or what I refer to as home barista espresso machines. The domestic or consumer espresso machines tend to be up to around £200 or $300 and they have 15 bar, or some have 19, but usually 15 bar pump pressure and pressured baskets. The majority, there might be exceptions to that rule, but the majority of these machines, the sort of sub 200 pound consumer espresso machines have 15 bars of pressure and pressurized baskets. So that's one thing to remember about these kind of machines, and I'll get back to that shortly. Home barista machines or prosumer machines on the other hand, tend to range from around three or four hundred pounds upwards. And what most of these have in common is nine bars of pressure and standard baskets versus pressurized baskets. The nine bars of pressure thing, some of these machines, especially at the lower end, do use a 15 bar pump. So a pump that actually creates 15 bars but they have an overpressure valve, which keeps the pressure at nine bars while the shot's been pulled. So the domestic or consumer machines are much cheaper espresso machines are made in this way with a 15 bar pump and what's called a pressured basket. In order to enable people to have an espresso machine at home much cheaper and also easier for someone who hasn't honed the home barista skills to just turn the machine on and get espresso from it. These kind of machines are made to be used with cheaper grinders, grinders that aren't capable of espresso with standard baskets and or pre-ground coffee. So again, it's aimed at the more standard, normal coffee drinker who just wants to buy a fairly inexpensive machine, buy a bag of coffee and make espresso with it. So just talk briefly about the pressured basket thing. So the basket is, the filter basket is the filter that goes in the filter holder, the porter filter, and you put your ground coffee in there, and then you put that into your espresso machine, press a button. The standard baskets require grinding particularly fine for espresso, but also grinding precisely, getting the right grind size for that particular coffee bean and your particular espresso machine to get the extraction right. And if you don't do that right, you get what we call sink shots rather than drink shots. So you get shots that are either over extracted and taste bitter, or you get shots that are under extracted and taste sour and all manner of bad. So with a decent espresso machine, a home barista espresso machine or prosumer espresso machine, there's a learning curve involved in order to do that. You can't just get out of the box and make great espresso with it. You'll probably get out of the box with no learning curve and get horrible espresso with it. So pressurized baskets, I believe were invented by Gaja and they call them perfect crema baskets. And that makes sense because what these baskets do is force the coffee under high pressure, usually 15 bars of pressure, through a very small hole in the bottom of the basket. And what this does is 
gives the impression of crema. It creates something that looks like the crema you get on a perfectly pulled shot of espresso. So these kind of baskets enable you to mimic the look of crema, but what these kind of baskets can't do is enable you to mimic the taste of a perfectly pulled shot of espresso. So it's more about looks, it's more about aesthetics. But to be fair to this kind of basket, they do kind of do the job. They enable the standard everyday coffee drinker to buy an espresso machine, get it off the shelf, take it out of the box and make okay espresso. But if you want to make perfect espresso, if you want to spend time and effort honing your skills and being able to really master the art of pulling great shots of espresso, then these kind of machines with these kind of baskets just won't quite do. So that's the domestic or consumer espresso machines. So they're around up to around £200, $300. They nearly always have 15 or sometimes 19 bar pumps pull the shots at 15 bars because they don't usually have an overpressure valve and they usually have pretty much always have pressurized baskets. If you're wanting to aim for perfection, if you're wanting to make as good espresso as you possibly can, this involves investing in a home barista espresso machine or prosumer espresso machine. But not only that, it involves embarking upon a hobby. The home barista thing is a hobby. It isn't just means to an end. It takes time, it takes investment, it takes effort. And for them reasons, it really is a hobby. And you just need to bear in mind, if you're buying this kind of espresso machine, a home barista espresso machine, you're not just buying a machine to turn on and press a button. You are buying a machine to enter into a hobby. So if you want to do that, if you want to get into being a home barista and you want to embark upon that hobby, then you'll need a home barista espresso machine. And these kind of machines, in my humble opinion, this is debatable, start off with the likes of the Gadget Classic Pro, the Sage or Breville Bambino Plus or Duotemp Pro, and the integrated grinder machines from Sage or Breville such as the Barista Express and Barista Pro. And by the way, although these machines have an integrated grinder, they're not mean to cup coffee machines because they don't have the internals that handle all of the rest of the espresso making process for you. The only similarity they have to beans cup coffee machines is the integrated grinder. So when you're looking at home barista or prosumer machines, you'll find there are three, four types of machine. So at the entry level, you tend to have the thermocoil or single boiler. So machines such as a Sage or Breville, Barista Express, Barista Pro, Joe Temp Pro, Bambino Plus, these have a thermocoil. This is an on-demand water heater versus having an actual brew boiler. And then machines such as a Gadget Classic, the Rancilio Silvia, these are single boiler. So they have a boiler, but one single boiler for both brew brewing and steaming milk. So the main issue with using a single boiler machine or a thermoblock or thermocoil machine is that you can only do one thing at a time. So you need to pull your shot and then steam your milk separately, whichever way around you prefer. If you want to be able to pull the shot and steam the milk at the same time, like you'll see professional baristas doing, then you'll need either a heat exchanger espresso machine or a dual boiler machine. So heat exchanger espresso machines are usually, not always, but usually next up in terms of price from single boiler machines. And they enable you to pull the shot and steam the milk at the same time as a dual boiler machine would, but they have a single boiler and a heat exchanger, which is essentially a big metal tube that goes through the boiler and uses the heat of the steam boiler to heat the water for the espresso. Basically, I'm sure that's not a perfect explanation of how heat exchanger machines work, but all you really need to know is they enable you to pull the shot and steam your milk at the same time without having two boilers. So dual boiler espresso machines, as the name would suggest, have two boilers. They have a brew boiler for the espresso and then a steam boiler, obviously, for the steam. In terms of cost, heat exchanger machines tend to start around about a thousand pounds or just under a thousand pounds. Dual boiler machines tend to start off at around 12, 13, 1400 pounds. I can go up and up and up from there. So hopefully that's given you a bit more of an understanding of the different kinds of home barista espresso machines. You've got the single boiler, thermoblock and thermocoil machines. 
you've got the heat exchanger machines and then the dual boiler machines. But the one thing we've not discussed yet is the coffee grinder. And if you're buying a home barista or a prosumer espresso machine and you're getting into the home barista hobby, you do need a coffee grinder. Not just a coffee grinder, but a coffee grinder capable of espresso with standard baskets. With the domestic or consumer cheaper espresso machines that come with pressurized baskets, you can use these with bags of pre-ground coffee, if you must. And you can use these with cheaper grinders that aren't capable of grinding fine enough or precisely enough for espresso with standard baskets. But if you're using standard baskets with a home barista machine, you're gonna need a grinder that will get fine enough and also let you get in precisely enough, allow you to finely tune the grind size enough to properly dial in. Dialing in means to get the grind size perfect for the coffee you're using and the espresso machine you're using. You can't just use the same grind size for every coffee bean and every espresso machine is different as well. So each different coffee bean will require a different grind size on every different espresso machine pretty much. So for home barista machines, you need a capable espresso grinder and click here for the video I've recently done on coffee grinders. So when it comes to espresso, we've spoken about the bean to cup machines, the domestic machines, and the home barista or prosumer machines. One machine we've not spoken about yet and I will touch on briefly here is a machine that kind of straddles the bean to cup coffee machines and the home barista espresso machines. And that is a Sage or Breville Oracle and Oracle Touch. So with these machines from Sage or Breville, they offer the results of a full one touch bean to cup coffee machine in that the machine does practically everything for you but it enables the user to have more of a traditional espresso making experience. You get to look and feel the part when you're pulling shots and steaming milk, etc. But the machine is taking care of all the complex parts that you don't need to develop the home barista skills. So just like with using a traditional espresso machine, the user handles the porter filter. So you would put the porter filter into the grinding area under the grind chute, but the machine handles the dosing, handles the tamping, and then you just move the porter filter over, lock it into the group, and then press a button. And basically the machine does everything else for you. It steams the milk into a jug, enabling you to then work on latte art skills, but without you having to develop the skills of perfectly steaming milk, which is quite a bit harder than it looks, believe me. To quickly recap, we've got filter coffee machines, we've got pod or disc coffee machines, and we've got bean to cup espresso machines, and then traditional espresso machines, semi-automatic and fully manual. And then among the espresso machines, we've got domestic or consumer lower end espresso machines with 15 bars pressure and pressurized baskets. And then we've got the prosumer or home barista espresso machines. And among them, we've got the single boiler or thermoblock or thermocoil machines. We've got the heat exchanger machines and then the dual boiler espresso machines. So thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not click here to watch another one and click the like button, cheers. And to become an official Coffee Botherer, you need to click this image around here somewhere to subscribe to this channel and to become an accredited Coffee Botherer, also known as Patreon supporter, go to patreon.com forward slash coffee blog kev. Tatty bye.